Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, we have an incredible chef who I met many years ago at Vegetarian Summerfest, and she is going to be making lunch, which is perfect because right where I am, it's just about lunchtime. And she has a new friend that she just rescued that you're going to meet. So if you hear a little barking, please understand that. <laughs> That's a new new puppy to her. Please welcome Chef Christina Martin. It's so good to see you again. Thank you for being here. Hi, Chef AJ. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time since I saw you doing handstands at NAVS. <laughs> it, it has been a long time. I think the last time I was there was two years ago when I was uh, lucky enough to win that award, the, uh, the it, or not award, well, to be installed into uh -huh. the Media Hall of Fame. So that's one of the greatest moments of my life. You've been a fixture at Summerfest for a long time. How did you get involved with them? And maybe tell people what Summerfest is in case they don't know. So um, Summerfest is um, NAVS. Um, it's now veg uh, Vegan Fest. It's uh, usually held at the University of Johnstown in um, PA every July, around the 4th of July. And it's a week long vegan conference where you learn from some incredible speakers, uh, cooking demos. And how I got involved was uh, I'm a member of the American Vegan Society and um, Freya, who's been a real mentor to me. She is the president, um, Freya Dinshaw. She uh, asked me to go, uh, well, probably like 12 years ago. And I went and I went as a volunteer and I helped in the kitchen because I was doing cooking at the time um, and going to cooking classes, uh, cooking school. And uh, I went and I fell in love with it and I went back every year. I think I missed the last year. So, um, but I was disappointed because it got canceled this year, but um, hopefully again, it'll be back. So you can look online and, and, and follow the um, So this is the- We're doing a virtual summer fest this year, right? Are they? I'm not sure. Are they doing? Are they doing a virtual vegetarian summer fest? I didn't see it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Maybe they are. I don't think so because I'm trying to feature as many of the speakers from summer fest as I can. I've had Mary Beth on. I've had I've had the executive chef Mark Reinfeld on. So and now I have you on. So that's great. So who's the little fella? So this is Theo. He's the rescue. I got him uh, tomorrow. Will be two weeks. He was with a foster family. Um, he came from a puppy mill, but he is doing wonderful. He's very loving. So he may bark. I'm going to put him down. He's got his toys and treats. So let's see. Okay, where we start. Well, we appreciate you adopting. We appreciate everyone adopting over shopping. So thank you for doing that. No, no problem. So hopefully you can see in my tiny kitchen here, I'm down at the beach in the Jersey Shore. And unfortunately, I don't have air conditioning. They're coming in next week to do it. But um, there's a little bit of an ocean breeze. <laughs> So today I'm going to prepare a lunch, like uh, Chef AJ said, I'm going to show you a pickled vegetable. Two of the, the dishes that are most asked about on my Instagram are my um, spinach artichoke dip and my pickled vegetables. And since it's gardening season, I thought, well, a better way to show a pickled vegetable featuring the veggies um, in a sandwich. It's something you can take with you to work or, you know, to eat at lunchtime, uh, a really simple, easy um, meal that's totally plant-based and vegan. So I also, um, my journey started in about 1999. When I got pregnant with my daughter, I changed my diet. And over the years, it just became more and more vegan. And um, I had the opportunity to go to cooking school after I was an accountant for many years. And then I, I went to cooking school. I got to work at Veg Restaurant in Philadelphia and some other restaurants in Philly where I learned a lot. And then I started teaching. And right now I am a 10th grade uh, high school teacher of culinary arts. We hopefully we're going back in September. We're not sure yet, but if not, we'll be virtual. So there's good practice for it. <laughs> I am used to doing community ed classes uh, with people live, but this is um, still a way to get out to the people and show, um, you know, some simple recipes. We're going to start with our pickle veg. So um, normally we'd make this with sugar, but after talking to Chef AJ, I decided to pull the sugar out of the recipe and we're going to use two cups of apple cider vinegar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reduction. So that reduction is going to help bring the sweet out so that I don't have to use three tablespoons of sugar. I have a question, Christina. You yeah. said you're a 10th grade culinary arts teacher. Are you able to teach them plant-based or do you have to follow the curriculum? I have to follow the curriculum, but I always put my twist in it. So I've been teaching, this will be my third year. Um, the first, first two years that I taught, uh, I taught 10th grade also. Um, I started a school garden to show them how to grow vegetables. Um, they actually learned how to make this sandwich. We featured on our menu. 
And they were very open. I showed them Satan. I always showed them the, the other option, that there's always options out there. Because when you go to a restaurant nowadays, it's a lot easier than years ago when you only had pasta and vegetables on the menu. So many more restaurants ha offer plant-based items. Is it true that you worked at Veg, one of the premier vegan restaurants in Philadelphia? Yep. So I was on the opening crew uh, with um, Rich and Kate came to me and knew that I was a vegan and that I was uh, finished culinary, culinary school and asked me to be on the opening team. So I started as a line cook there and I worked my way over to pastry and I did pastry there too. I was a pastry. You know, how, did you like, for, how did you like working in a restaurant? Oh, I loved it, but my kids were little, so it was hard. I, I really needed something. And that's why teaching is the best option um, when you have little kids. And they, um, but I loved it. I, I did all their house breads too at the end. So I would bake and bread for them. Um, did all the um, desserts, ice cream. I know how to make vegan ice cream really well. And um, yeah, it was really fun. I worked in Italian restaurants. I worked at other restaurants as well um, through the years. But I'm, I was late, you know, like I, this is a second career for me. So what was your first career? I was a, I, I was an accountant. Oh, well, this sounds like a lot more fun. Yeah. I'm a bachelor's in business, but you know what? It was the best thing I ever did because in order to be in this business, you need to know your costing and it's just, it's wonderful to have that business background. So I'm grateful now. I didn't like it at the time, but, um, I'm grateful now to have that. And I got to audit a lot of different, um, Production, food production things. I audited juice manufacturers and stuff like that. So that was cool. Great. So is there a name? Doing a oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to know yeah. if there's a name for the whole dish that you're making. I that somebody on Instagram when I posted the picture said it was called Bin Ma or, or something. Bami. Me. It's a Bami, me, which is a Vietnamese um, sandwich that's normally made with meat, pickled veg on a baguette. So this is my take on it. Just like some people do a take on a Reuben. I don't like to call it the, the same as the dish because it's not you know, it doesn't have meat on it. Um, it's a plant-based version of it. Nice. So like, like I said, I'm going to, I'm just, I want to reduce the, the apple cider vinegar. Now you can use other vinegars. Like I'm studying macrobiotics. We use um, plum vinegar too. Can you see down on the, uh, on I can the, stove see the top of the, the top of the dish. I can see only the top mm -hmm. of the dish. So yeah, I guess like that, but you want to see my cutting board. Oh yeah. Now I can see the stove. All right, it is a very tiny kitchen. <laughs> All right, so while that's reducing, I did some cucumbers last night. So for the dish, I'm doing cucumbers, carrots, and jalapenos. So carrots are really hard, so we're gonna have to do the brine on them really hot. The jalapenos, we're gonna put the brine on when the brine's warm, and the cucumbers, we're gonna put the brine on when it's cold. So, pickled jalapenos sound amazing. Yeah, so I have them made for our sandwich, but I'm going to give it a little demo on how we're going to put this together. So, I know a lot of people don't really like the mandolin, but um, it does a really nice job for the cucumbers. So, you can use a knife or you can use a mandolin, and you just there are ones that have guards on them so that you don't cut yourself because it's very dangerous. You, it's, it's amazing. I don't know any chef other than me that uses the guard. I've seen people twice cut the tip of their thumb off. Aren't you scared? They have a glove as well. Yeah, they have a glove and um, I'm doing it very slow, like I'm watching. But um, a lot of times you'll keep your hand flat. You wanna keep your hand flat and you wanna have your guard on or a glove. But these, um, these are nice to get a really even cut, but you can also use your knife. Well, I'm going to do it for the jalapeno too. So, so we're going to have our cucumbers. I have my carrots already set up in a little jar here. Um, you want to do the matchstick for this dish. So our, our vinegar, you're going to smell vinegar. Like I think I like the smell of it. it smells really nice in the house. Now, one thing you want to do is when you're done with this jalapeno, you have to wash your hands and you don't want to touch your eyes. Right. Have 
you ever tried the reduced vinegar that I recommend, like the California balsamic that come in a variety of savory or sweet flavors? No, I wanted to ask you about the balsamic because I'm not a huge balsamic person, but I'm curious to try them. Well, guess what? As a gift for being on the show, you're going to choose two flavors and Thomas oh, from California balsamic is going to send them to you. So you'll get to oh. experiment with them. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Thank you. You're well, so welcome. I actually use them to marinate my vegetables. So I'll take things like jalapeno, onion, cucumber, thinly sliced, even carrot, and I will put them in about a half a cup of flavored balsamic, put it in the fridge, and then I have a marinated vegetable without having to use oil, sugar, or salt. So uh, the balsamic doesn't have much sugar in it? Well, well, okay, it's 30 calories a tablespoon, which is more mm -hmm. than like, a, you know, an apple cider. It, the sugar comes from the grape, so they don't add any sugar, but it's reduced. So yes, it's reduced. Right. It is, it is so high. You're, not adding, you're not adding any. Correct. Correct. So you're going to fill your jars up completely as packed as you can. And then you're also going to add some dill. I like fresh dill in it and get it from the garden. You're going to pack your dill into each one as well. And then, so we're still waiting. That's still going to reduce a little bit more. Um, again, I'm doing it because I want to bring the sweet out because we're not adding three tablespoons of sugar, which uh, normally would be in a recipe, in a pickling recipe. And I'm going to get three cups of water. So now also we have set up, we have garlic, fresh garlic, juniper berries, mustard seeds, and you can put black peppercorns too. I just didn't have them, but they're on the recipe. And Chef AJ, you put the recipe on the YouTube page? Yes, I did put the recipe in the YouTube page in the show notes. And okay. I'm glad you don't, that's, that's amazing that you can put all those wonderful things in. Apple saying she sometimes puts fennel in. Oh yeah, you can put, so you can use any herb that you like as well. Um, and, and spice too. Juniper berries are a little bit harder to find, but um, I found them at the Whole Foods store. I'm sure maybe Trader Joe's has them too. Anybody has a nice selection of um, spices. Nowadays, I know a lot of people are getting all of our products online as well. All right, so once that's reduced down, we're gonna add three, three cups of water. I'm gonna add all my spices. So I'm gonna add my mustard seed, my juniper berries, one tablespoon of each of those, three garlic. Louise wants to know if the juniper, juniper berries are fresh or frozen and if it matters. They are dried and they come in they come in a little bottle like this. Oh, neat. Do you have any specialty spice shops where you live? Like we, you know, we have like savory spice and pensies. Do you have any of those types? Well, of the closest to us would be Philadelphia, the Thai market. They have spice shops um, in Philadelphia at the Thai market. Also Reading Terminal Market and in the city as well. Did you know that I went to college in Philadelphia to the University of Pennsylvania? I think I did know that. Yep. 1977. That's how I became a vegetarian. I was supposed to be a veterinarian, but oh, plans. Yep. That's why I went to Penn. I'm also putting salt in my, you can, you can leave it out. I know I, I'm assuming a lot of the followers, you know, do SOS. It's something I'm not real familiar with, but I'm starting to learn it myself, trying to um, clean up my diet even more. How old are your kids now? So I have a daughter who's ni uh, 19. She'll be 20 next month. She just got back from Disney. She was doing an internship. 
um, the college program, but then COVID hit and she had to come back. Um, and my son is going in the 10th grade. Wow. He's a little bored. He's bored with virtual learning, but you know, it is what it is. This is really interesting. Francie Sue okay. said, does Chef Christina know that in South Africa, where I was raised, there was a very prominent and well-respected culinary school called the Christina Martin School of Culinary Arts. Maybe you should teach oh. there. <laughs> wow. No, I didn't know that. That's great to know. All right, so we're waiting for our, so if you put sugar and salt into your brine, you wanna wait for that to melt down. You wanna wait for it to dissolve. And then we're just gonna let this simmer a little bit. All right. Now I'm gonna put these behind me while I do the next. We're gonna work on our sandwich. And I have my tofu in the refrigerator. So as we know, tofu is a protein and it's not something you wanna leave out. You don't wanna bring it up to room temperature. I was once in a culinary competition at school in a college and I did a protein dish and I left the protein sitting on the speed rack and I got points deducted um, because it is protein has to stay cold. Interesting. So probably not a good thing to bring to a potluck then a tofu dish. No, I mean, once it's cooked, but yeah, you want to keep it, you want to keep it cold. So I have a sheet pan set up already here. And I'm just going to slice the tofu down. Now, everybody asked me about knives as well. Like what's the best knife to use? And I'm sure AJ, they ask you all the time. Yeah, and I just, I'm not a, I'm, I'm a lazy chef. I use a tool. So if I have to cut something with a knife, I'll cut it with a mandolin or a food <laughs> processor. So I'm the worst one to ask for knives. <laughs> well, people, people always ask in class. And what I say is it's the one that fits comfortable in your hand. You have to use it every day. You have to feel comfortable with it. Not because a celebrity on TV says that, you know, that's the best knife to use. Um, so, you know, shop around. Um, I have this Nakiri from, um, New York from a place called Porn. Um, but I'll be honest, I, I really like the little um, Cuisinart set at Home Depot. It's little colored knives that are have a chef knife in them, a serrated knife in them. Um, and they're really nice for every day and they're lightweight. So as long as it fits well in your hand and you're comfortable with it because you don't want to cut yourself. And we all know that a, um, a dull knife cuts you, not a sharp knife, right? Absolutely. I always tell people in general, when they ask what of this or what of that I should get is to get the biggest and best that they could afford. Christina, there's a lot of questions. Is there any way to pickle without salt? We do have some people that maybe are following Dr. Esselstyn and they're on a salt diet. Is there a way to do it without salt? Yeah, I mean, I would just use the, the I would just do it a minute. Just omit the salt in the recipe I put out. Great, thank you. So, and like I said, I reduce the vinegar. Normally I don't reduce the vinegar. I reduce the vinegar so that in set place of the sugar. Terrific. And uh, B Billy is asking if the tofu has been pressed. So, oh, exactly. That's a good question. Thank you. Um, no, I don't press my tofu, but a lot of people do. I'm just not big on a bunch of gadgets or, um, and time-wise, but um, some things with tofu and some things that I learned working in restaurants. Um, the best thing to do with tofu is freeze it. And then when it thaws out and then you put your marinade on it, it will absorb the marinade through it better. So you can brine it with some like um, parsley and lemon and put it in the fridge. Um, then you can, free you can freeze it, then put it in the fridge, marinate it, and then you're good to go. It will uh, absorb the, um, the flavor better when it's frozen first. Most of the vegetarian restaurants, that's what they do. Perfect. So I normally typically do oil, salt, and pepper on my tofu and I bake it in the oven. Now I thought about this and Chef AJ with the air fryer, this would probably be perfect in the air fryer because you, bit, you use the air fryer, but it's no oil, right? Correct. It, it doesn't need any oil. So 
Um, so if you have an air fryer, this would be a great recipe to try um, in your air fryer. And I may have to get one now after thinking about it. But normally I bake it in the oven with um, brush with oil, salt, and pepper. So because I'm trying to do it the SOS, I have a little bit of soy sauce that is low sodium or no sodium. And I'm just gonna um, put some soy sauce on it. So whatever you want to want to use on yours, if you want to use soy sauce or you're okay with the oil. As long as people have options, I think just putting it in the air fryer, even without a seasoning would probably work really well. But yeah, as, as long as it, it, you want it to um, bake and like kind of get crispy, but not, not crispy like you're frying it. Because in most restaurants, that's what they're doing. They're just popping it in a, a deep fryer. So we're gonna bake this at 350 until about 20 minutes. I usually flip it over 10 minutes um, through. This way it gets um, brown on each side. A lot of people are saying they have air fried the tofu and it comes out perfect. Yeah, so let's, let, you know, I'll have to try it for the next time. Do you have an instant pot, Christina? No, I don't have an instant pot. I have, um, I'll show you. The, the reason I said is for people that aren't wanting to get an air fryer, if they're not sure, you can get a special crisp lid to the instant pot to test out air frying technology. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've seen so many groups with the instant pot. I, I cook my rice in this little clay pot. How, do you, how does that work? It's, it, you don't plug it in, do you? I've never nope, it's on the stove, on the gas stove or electric stove. Um, you put your water and your salt in it. It has an inner lid and then this lid and you cook it kind of like you would in a regular pot, but it's clay. Comes out nice and moist and it's it's on Amazon. It's called a Denobe pot and um, they use a lot in macrobiotic cooking. That's so cool. Colleen mm -hmm. is saying that all the ingredients for bin ma, banh mi sorry, are delicious also over rice if people don't want to eat bread. Right, so when I get to the bread part, I was gonna talk about that because um, I've kind of switched over trying uh, the last couple of weeks of not eating gluten myself and um, coming up with ways of, you know, gluten-free bread, a lot of it's not vegan and a lot of it's just, you know, a bunch of starches and whatnot. So um, over a bowl of, um, I have arugula that, that I'm going to take out of the fridge and um, you can do it as a bowl, like she said, or you can do it in a sandwich. Because you can cube up the, the tofu and put it in an air fryer, right? So you can have little chunks in your salad instead of a big slab that you would put in the sandwich of yeah, that, the tofu, that, that sounds right? Good. Yeah, and so the thing with recipes are, and I found this over the years, they're guidelines. So, if, you know, if you don't use the salt, don't, you know, find, find something else. If you don't like an ingredient that's in there, there's always a way to change it out. Where you run into trouble with that is baking. Because you can't pull out baking soda and baking powder and inspect your cake to rise. So when I you cook, you, you sound like me. I just said that on a video the other day that I was doing for a, another chef's program. I said, you know, cooking is an art, but baking is a science. You can be experimental and improvisational in cooking, but baking, you really have to follow the recipe. You can. And I was torn because I really wanted to do a fruit galette for this. Like I'm really a closet vegan baker. I've done, I've done a lot of um, pastry, like I said, at Veg, and then at um, a scene, which is Denny Waxman's, um, what Denny Waxman's restaurant um, market in Philadelphia. And that was a macrobiotic. And I learned a lot of macrobiotic recipes there, um, which, you know, it's using um, brown rice syrup as a sweetener. I, don't, I guess SOS, that's, you wouldn't use that, right? You wouldn't use maple syrup or... I, well, okay, so for the strictest version that I teach for the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, mm -hmm. we only use fruit like dates. But this show is okay. basically oil-free, so you're welcome to come back and do the fruit galette because I, my, the chefs on this show are allowed to use uh, sugar and salt. It's just that okay. we prefer no oil mainly just for the health reasons. For the health, yeah. I, and I think it's nice to have, like you said, people can get options, um, you know, when they're cooking. So, you know, if you don't like something... You can add something else. I ha I keep my dates in the fridge. I have a whole bunch of dates. I have like two jars of dates. So I use a lot of dates. All right, so our brine. 
I'm going to take it over and I'm going to pour it into a uh, measuring cup. So I actually tried this last night without the, without the sugar in it, and it's actually really delicious. So they came out just as well. I didn't miss the sugar, the three tablespoons of sugar in them. You know, you just want to let them sit overnight in your fridge. Let's see. Should we be keeping dried dates in the refrigerator? I have never kept my dates in the refrigerator, so I don't know. Do you keep your really? dates in the refrigerator? I keep them in the fridge. Mm -hmm. You do? Okay. Yeah. Maybe because I guess it depends how many you have and how fast you use them. I find that the medjool, they, they, the medjool are so moist, they, they never seem to dry out. That's what I have, but mine, I don't know, maybe it's the salty air down here. They, they've dried out on me. All right, so the only one we want to put this hot liquid over is the cucumber, and I'm going to do it over the sink. So you want to fill it up so that your cucumbers are all covered, your dill, I don't know if you can see that. I would even pack more in here. And you also, I know now with the garden, a lot of people have the Kirby cucumbers. They're the ones you want to use um, in your pickling. But if you can't find them, like I didn't have them in the garden, I had to get regular um, cucumbers. They're fine too. So yeah, I tried my garden um, the first time here at the shore um, doing a, a vegetable garden and pretty well. I was surprised I didn't get a lot of zucchini, which I'm kind of bummed because I wanted zucchini bread. And tomatoes, I got all different kinds of tomatoes. So they did really well in the soil. Um, also I have celery growing for the first time, tried that. So that's another thing. You can use the leaves from celery, different dishes. So I also try to teach the students too. We did a whole lesson on um, food waste in the kitchen and trying to teach them, you know, to use all the product and not waste. So they came up with some pretty cool ideas over virtual learning on how we would uh, use all the product and not waste and then also compost for our garden. So like I said, since it was garden season, I decided to do the pickling. So again, you want to do um, the carrot, oh, you want to do the carrots too while this is warm. Colleen has another great idea for all the ingredients, putting them in rice paper rolls and air frying them. Oh, okay. That sounds really good. I don't know, guys, if dates can stay moist in the fridge because I've never honestly refrigerated my dates. I've, I've been using dates for, gosh, 15 years. I don't, think, I don't think they need to be. I don't, I don't think they need to be refrigerated. I don't know. Mine are, see if they're moist. I haven't used them in a little bit. I usually just use them in baking. They're cold. I definitely would keep date paste in the refrigerator though, because that's a processed product that you make and that I would not keep at room temperature. I would freeze that in the refrigerator. Right, so the other thing those of you that are asking for the recipe, what the show notes are is, you, I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but if you go, I mean, excuse me, on Facebook, because I know some are watching on Facebook, some are watching on YouTube. It's on YouTube right underneath the video. There's an upside down triangle. If you click more, that's where the recipe in the bio of Chef Christina is. And it will stay there. And it's there now. So the other thing is I do have, I do have a couple of these fancy jars, but um, I like to use, you know, jars that mason jars like this was um, a salsa jar and jam jars or jelly jars are always good to use. Um, this is a quick pickling method. So these pickles are only going to last. I only use them within a week, um, probably a week to two. Okay. And let me give them a nice cue. There you go. So he likes ice cubes. That's right. They're, they're not. Maybe they, they, they <laughs> that's a he, perfect 
SOS free treat ice cube. Yeah. So um, it's probably soothing. He, he came to me with really terrible teeth and I had to have his teeth cleaned. So um, they are sparkly white now and we're trying to keep them that way. Um, these are going to last, like I said, about a week. Usually I'll go through them. Um, typically, if you want long-term storage of pickling, like, like um, you're going to have to can them, which is a hot method, which you're going to boil jars and sanitize all that. So make them. tomato sauce and stuff like that. You do that method. But for this quick method, um, it's really easy to do. It's so pretty, the jars. What's that? Yeah, so I, here's my other one. Um, I use these little, cause I don't, I want to reuse. So um, I have these little jam jars that I use for pickling. So I kind of want to leave them up, but. They don't really bounce well on my stove. Put these behind. All right, so now that we have everything, we're going to put everything together that we need for to make our sandwich. And that's called mise en place. For those of you who went to culinary school, um, that's having a French term to have everything in its place. So it just makes it a little bit easier cooking wise if we have everything together. Yeah, mise en place is something I always teach. It just makes it so much easier to do any kind of prep, batch cooking or a recipe. Great. So to assemble the bami, I have my tofu already um, baked off. Now I have some multi-grain bread and we could also, like you said, make this into a bowl. And what's really cool is my friend makes pottery and she made me these really pretty, these really pretty bowls that I have. She sells them at the Brain Team Farmer Market, but um, these would make a really nice uh, salad. Those are with, all pickle, with all the pickled veg. Does she sell the bowls online as well? Yep, uh, I believe so. And she, the little ones too, like this little one here, she made me a whole set and they call it the chef Christine, or the chef bowl, I think. Gorgeous. All right, we had so, a chef from Mexico on Friday and people kept commenting on how beautiful the bowls were. Well, we eat with our eyes. So it's really nice to always have, you know, you know, once in a while we have to eat on paper plates, but um, it's really nice to have nice dishes. And, you know, especially now that we're, you know, inside more and you know, can't go out to restaurants that, um, that we make dinner time special. What do you eat, Christina, in a day? What does your eating style and exercise days look like? Okay, well, Jeff Christina doesn't always practice what she preaches. And I am, uh, as I'm getting older, I realize that, you know, I may have to do no salt, no sugar, no, no oil soon. Um, but no, I, um, this morning I actually had quinoa, beans, and arugula salad for breakfast. That sounds this, amazing. Yep, this is going to be my lunch. Um, I'm actually making my own lunch. Um, and I'm not sure for dinner. Yeah, last night I made um, the kids uh, bean enchiladas. So I use refried beans, um, no meat. I use salsa and salsa verde, um, fresh tomatoes from the garden. We made like a little pico with it and they loved it. I used corn um, tortillas and baked them in the oven. And it, it was a really quick night, you know, evening dish. So I'm going to assemble this. Let's find the bottom. Put two pieces on each. Now I, since we don't really have a sauce for it, I'm going to put some lemon juice. I mean, lime juice on the tofu. Just going to squeeze it on. Can you see? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And, oh, I love arugula. It's not normally on this dish. This dish is gonna have cilantro, but I actually wanna put arugula on the bottom. I love arugula. It's a bitter green. It's supposed to be good um, for stress. Bitter greens, like escarole, arugula, endive, those kinds, radicchio, are all your bitter greens. Okay, 
So we're going to have carrots. We're going to have jalapeno. The other thing that's really nice to pickle is radish. I didn't have radishes in the garden, but they are really nice pickled. Actually, AJ, I don't know if you've tried, but have you tried roasting radishes? Yes. Well, actually, I just, I just, I air fry them and they're amazing. I got the, purple, I got the purple ones and I air fried radishes. They're amazing. So what kind of air fryer should I get then? Well, I, you know, here's the thing. I, again, get back to the biggest and best would, would be the Breville, but if you're not going to like it, you don't want to spend $400. So maybe get a $39 one at Walmart or a crisp lid for, you know, $69 to see if you like air fry technology first. First. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, so I'm putting some jalapenos in. And these I pickled last night, so they set overnight. Yeah. And then I'm gonna put our cucumbers that I did. Can you see? Gorgeous. Yay. Time for and another ice cube. <laughs> We're gonna have to give you a treat, right? There you go. He wants me to pick them up. That's his pick me up cry. Maybe you should get one of those snugglies like I have for Bailey where you can just wear I, him. You know, I thought of that when I get ready for the show. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to get a snuggly for him. Okay. And we're not gonna put the berries in it. We're just gonna put the the pull the carrots out. So we have our jalapeno, our cucumber, and our carrot. And then we have fresh cilantro. Now I know a lot of people aren't fans of cilantro. You could use parsley if you're not a big cilantro fan. A lot of people are not cilantro fans. Are you Chef Adrian? You know, I, I, I don't see cilantro, but I don't mind it. I much prefer the taste of arugula. Yeah, well, I have the, yeah, we have the arugula on the bottom. But I like cilantro. I, I, it's not something I have to have, but I certainly in, in Mexican food, I love it. My herb is probably oh, yeah. though. So guys, while well, she's stepping away, uh, tomorrow. I have to give him a treat. Here you go. Uh, here's interesting. MB wants to know, could mushroom be used in place of tofu? I don't see why not. Oh yeah, nice portabella, yeah. Yeah. Louise wants so to know. Can you know, kind of air fry that, JJ? Oh, I definitely you could air fry it. You could grill it. I just a recipe with the California balsamic vinegars where I marinated it in Italian and then grilled it. It would be amazing. Louise wants to know what kind of pup is it? Is he a? Is he? A, oh, he's a Yorkie. Oh, he's a, he's Yorkie. a Yorkie. Yeah, he has his ears down though. I'm not sure. Uh, like I said, he was in a puppy mill. Um, you know, a breeder for eight years. So he didn't know like grass and wasn't potty trained. So it's like having a puppy. He wakes up around one o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the morning to go for a walk. So I'm a little sleep deprived. It's like being a new mother. Yeah, it's like if you wanna have kids, have, have a little dog first. All right, so these, this is our sandwich. Put some more arugula. Some people say cilantro tastes like soap to them. I think it's a genetic thing, Jean. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't like cilantro. So in that case, like I said, you could do um, parsley or even the celery. Like I, if I'm running out and I want to make a chickpea salad and I don't have um, parsley or fresh, I don't have any fresh things, I might have some celery in the fridge. I'll grab the greens off of it, chop them up and it has some freshness. Cause you always want to add freshness to a dish, especially when you cook and you want to always have it. That's why restaurants garnish and they always garnish with something that's edible. If you go in and you have a garnish that's a stick of rosemary, you can't really eat a stick of rosemary. So um, you want to put something on the plate that's, that the customer can eat the whole thing. That makes sense. But don't you find that people often leave it on the plate anyway? Yeah, uh, you know, because a lot of times, you know, I always think, you know, was it washed or, you know, but, but sometimes they'll put the uh, kale, you know, piece of kale or a piece of curly parsley on the on the dish. But so, it is edible. 
Yeah, absolutely. Lori says, do you slice radishes to air fry anything you put on them? You could, Lori. I don't. I just air fry the, the trio bag from Trader Joe's of organic pink, purple, and white radishes, and I just air fry them. But you could certainly slice them. And there was a fun question for you about your students. Where did it go that I want to ask you about? Uh, here it is from Stephanie. With shows like Chopped Junior and Master Chef Junior, do you find some of your students already have culinary skills or at least a strong interest in learning? It depends on the school um, and where kind of, I was at a technical school at one point um, and it depends. Sometimes the kids, um, unfortunately sometimes the kids just take the class because they're hungry um, and not really interested in going into culinary. Um, I would say probably 10% or less probably go into the field after. Oh, I can pick you up now. Come on. Okay, so somebody watching live named Julie says ice cubes are bad for dogs. I've never heard oh, that. Really? I'd like to have a resource about that because I've never. Oh, we have to look that up. He just licks it. He's yeah. not really eating it, but he just licks it. Right. How you doing, little pup? You gotta let mommy get some sleep. <laughs> Say hi. Got his little bow tie. He's all ready. He's adorable. That really didn't take you that long to make, and we were talking for quite a long time. Yeah. So it's a really easy lunch. I want to leave some room for questions. I know you said an hour, but maybe. You know, yeah. if we had questions. Do you guys have any more questions for Chef Christina, or do you just want to get off this, the broadcast <laughs> and go make this sandwich right now? <laughs> Some people are talking about using nori as a wrap. That's also very good. Yeah. Yeah. You can put it in um, what you we know, said, rice, we said rice paper too, right? Oh, that sounds great. The people that are saying that cilantro tastes like soap, my question is, is how do you know what soap tastes like? <laughs> you know? Jill yeah. said that, that your pup's such a good helper. Did he come to you already named or did you get to name him? No, he came, uh, he came named, but we were, you know, I was allowed to change it, but he's been such through a hard life that I didn't want to change his name. He already knew it. He comes to it. Um, very lovable. He sits right next to a total lap dog. Um, but I can't even go to the bathroom without him standing outside the door barking. Uh, yes, so it, it's kind of like having kids. Like a little dog. <laughs> you don't get it. You don't get a minute a piece, right? But um, so cute people are loving him. They're saying he's little dogs. Really, are different. I've had both, and little dogs are are different. They just they 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 stick to you like glue. Well, I had a golden retriever. Unfortunately, he passed away in November. But um, had him for twelve years, and like you said, a big dog is totally different than than this little guy. Yeah. But yep, he's uh, he's living the beach life right now. He has he visited the ocean once. We're gonna go back and see it, but. He's doing really good. But uh, did you, there was another question about school. Let's see, you guys have any more questions about Christina or her culinary work? You know, I'll just ask you a fun question about Summerfest. What's, what was, what are some of your most memorable moments from, because you were like, you, you kind of ran the kitchen, didn't you? Well, it was, L Lorraine Cox was the, and um, Tom were the two in charge of that kitchen. I was kind of just a, a assistant, but I did, you know, I got to do a lot. I mean, I came with some experience of being in culinary school. And I also did the snack setup for when we checked in. So like Miyoko would send cheeses and I would make um, cheese platters and things like that for, and it helped with the snacks at night. So at night uh, at Veg Fest, there was always a party and, and snacks. Um, always a lot of popcorn, my, right? I have some memorable. So one was um, hanging out in the kitchen with Milton Mills. So everybody knows him, right? Yeah, he's been on the show. We love Uncle mm -hmm. Milton. Yeah, he was so much fun in the kitchen. Um, of course, you doing your handstands before class. That was always the best. Um, Chef Fran, I, I um, assisted at her demo. Chef Fran Cossigan, she's, she's um, pastry. She, she had to change her date, but she'll be on very soon. Any memorable cooking demos that you remember or chefs that you can recommend? Because I actually wrote Sharon asking for ideas of, of some Summerfest chefs, because I since it's not happening, I'd like to feature as many of the wonderful speakers from Vegetarian Summerfest as possible. Yeah, so we had, um, oh, Chef Allen. Yeah, he's coming on. He, he just oh, good, good. Yep, good. took a while to get him to answer me, but he's coming on. <laughs> He's busy. He's out there chopping wood and everything. He's out in Colorado, I believe. But um, uh, Chef Allen. Um, oh, um, Michelle from. Um, oh gosh, what is the herbivore? She she has the shop. Uh, I you know I emailed her and she didn't email me back. That's why I don't like reaching out to people. I figure if they want to come on, they'll get. But yes, I remember her because she has a book. Yeah. 
Yep, and uh, Rich Roll's wife, I did it. I assisted on her demo. Yep, she's coming up. She's November 13th. This is great. You probably, you probably have everybody that I know. Um, <laughs> Jill was already on the Veggie Queen. Right. With her Instapot. I guess I'm going to have to break down and get an Instapot and a fryer. I don't know where I'm going to put them here, but yeah. I have a very small kitchen. This is probably about 100 square foot. Wow. Um, uh, but I love it. You know, I, I, I went minimal a few years back, and I just think it's really uh, easy an easy way and um and cooking simple like cooking simple fresh ingredients that's what I try to teach the students as well too I had a student who made quinoa the best learned how to make quinoa and you know most a lot of people make it stick to the bottom of the pot and I mean imagine a 10th grader trying to make quinoa right and he would always make the quinoa for us and did a great job on it that's neat. so we did a lot of salad bowls um <laughs> We did a lot of salad bowls at school. I was in charge of uh, the salad bar area and sandwich area. So we did a lot of um, the, the teacher, we fed the teachers for lunch at the school I was last at. I'm going to a new school that's closer to the shore this year. Um, and so we did a lot of uh, bowls with um, greens and, and stuff from our garden and they learned how to do a compose, compose salad. So it was really fun. And it's fun teaching the kids about it and they'll come back in and they'll be like, I made this, you know, over the weekend for Aunt So and So, and I tried this, and I mean that's the fun of it, you know. And, and they're learning a life skill, whether they go work in a restaurant or not. Is they're it a learning? Is it a public school or a private school you work at? Public. You public school. Public. Everyone's mm -hmm. mentioning how your puppy is falling asleep now that you're holding them, and <laughs> there is a question: If they are you able? Billy wants to know: Can you show your view of the beach, or that, that would be too difficult right now? And now I have to run through the house. I have, I have a small, I don't face the ocean. I face the, uh, the, I guess the inlet, uh, but I can see water from the front of the house to cross the street. So I, I gotta have like an obstructed view, <laughs> partial ocean view. But you're close. So that's the main thing. There's yeah, a I'm close. But if you look on my Instagram, you'll see pictures of the beach. Um, I think you put it up there. Chef Christine is my Instagram. And I also, um, I do a plant-based chat on Twitter on Thursday nights. Um, that my friend, uh, Nate, he is a wine, um, sommelier from Texas and he's also vegan. And we started on Twitter. We might be moving it. Um, but we put out questions on a theme around, um, around a food theme and people answer the questions and it's a, we're trying to build a community and, and also share recipes and get people who maybe not, you know, eat plant-based all the time to try, you know, to try one recipe. Because for me, that's, that's how I like to teach, like, you know, add one thing to your diet. Um, you don't have to, you know, go cold turkey all the way, but you know, any little bit, you know, most people don't get enough fruits and vegetables in their diet. So they, you know, when I do the thing with the kids, I mean, the only fruit they got was ketchup. Wow. That's amazing. I always mm -hmm. like to say cold tofurkey. <laughs> yeah. There's so a question tofurkey. about the clay pot. What's the name of it that you showed for your rice and where does one get one? It's on Amazon. Uh, it's a Danabi. So I, I think it's spelled D-O-N-A-B-E. It's around $70 uh, on Amazon. And it makes really good rice, huh? Yeah, I do brown rice in it. Mm -hmm. Yep. That sounds great. Well, this it doesn't, is cook it, it doesn't cook it any faster, but to me, it's, it steams it more than like um, a stainless steel pot would. It sounds great. It sounds great. Well, people are loving your presentation, your sandwich, your dog. So thank, thank you so much for doing it. If you want to come back and make that fruit galette, we'd love to have you back because, you know, yeah, once I, you have something on the show, you got to come back. All right. Well, yeah, let me um, send me some dates because I really wanted to show you how to do um, the crust in a food processor. So it's really cool. Um, well, there's two ways to do it. We can do it by hand and then we can do it in a food processor. So it's really nice that, you know, have versatile um, ways amazing. to do things. What was your and most, the whole wheat flour. What was your most popular dessert at Veg? Oh, of course, the cheesecake. Yeah, wow. their Amazing. cheesecake and the crack on the bottom crust was a uh, Biscoff cookies from, you know, the Biscoff brand cookies. That was they didn't use graham crackers. Oh wow, that's amazing. Well, Nadej and others are saying you'll have to come back. It was great catching up with yeah. you. Yeah, love, love to see you. Thanks for rescuing and thanks everyone so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have Dr. Karen Dina, who is going to be giving an amazing PowerPoint presentation. Thanks again, Chef Christina. Take care. Bye.